Good morning YouTube, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, hey, I just want to say thanks to all the people who have subscribed and commented. We uh, we hit a milestone the other day and we've become a YouTube partner. So that's fairly exciting. Um, what I was trying to, what I was hoping to cover today though, is um, people have asked like why we've got all these random sized uh, MPPTs. And the, the reality is that when we started doing this, we had no idea what features existed on which MPPT, right? So, um, like why would why would you choose one and why would you choose the other i suppose is the question but um at, at the time we didn't know right and so what, what we actually started with is um is the same mppt we're using in the caravan i'll flash it up it's the 100 slash 20 right and anybody who's used one of these would would know there's something unique about the 100 slash 20 in the low scale range of mppts it's the only one that goes to 48 volts so this is what we started with, right? And again, I've got one in the van now. Our first one actually had a hot terminal, which is the first feature that we realized lacks on the little ones. And we, we ended up having to change um, to one of the bigger ones. So that was this one here. So these ones have got um, terminal protection on them. They detect when their terminals get hot and the little ones don't do that. So I suppose to try and save someone like that, I've made this mistake. This is not a smart one, right? This one doesn't have the, doesn't have the Bluetooth um, connection on it. Um, these ones definitely do, these ones are awesome. Um, but then someone also commented like, why don't I get one of the 450 by 100s or the 450 by 200s? And there's some caveats with those as well. So what I decided to do today is sort of just break down, give you a comparison of which one does what uh, and, and why you would or would not buy it. Now, those 450s look excellent. Given our last video, I'll, I'll put a little link to it up above. Given the last video where we've identified that actually pushing the voltage up um, helps with shading um, and, and the bypass diodes tend to work better at high voltages or at least that's what it appears um, you should push the voltage up as high as you can which I couldn't get two of these at the time so I had, I had to get one of these and there's nothing wrong with this and in fact sometimes this is actually outperforming that um, but obviously this gives us some flexibility in, in larger strings than this does so the 250 here being the, the PV voltage coming in and the 100 amps out and that's 150 in the PV voltage in and 100 amps out, and so on and so forth. Um, so what I was going to do today is I'm going to um, I'm going to do a comparison. Um, so I've, I've broken it up into three different chunks. We've got the small scale, the enthusiast scale, and the large scale. Um, no matter which way you do it, the the um, the scale is actually the same, right? The scale goes up, uh, the cost goes up with capacity, or the cost goes up with features. It doesn't really matter. The axis is, um, you know, two axes are the basically. Uh, same thing. So, what I've what I've got here is that in the small scale, um, I've got the 75 by 15, the 100 by 15, the 100 by 30, and the 100 by 50. They're all 24 volt or 12 volt only systems, right? These ones all do. They all do 48, which which means that you're limited to the the potential output. Um, also, in the 75, 15, and the 100 by 15, you get a load output, but you don't get that on the 100 by 30 and the 100 by 50. So when you look up the data sheets, the 100 by 30 and the 100 by 50 are actually on their own separate data sheet. They almost should fit into the enthusiast scale. I just didn't put them there um, because, like, the enthusiast scale's got got more capacity. So. Um, this is where the 100 by 20 is an outlier. It doesn't actually have the same output. It's, it just supports 48 volts, but doesn't actually um, have more capacity than the 100 by 50, for example. But then we jump onto the 150 by 35 and the 150 by 45. And they're, they're in my opinion, they're in the enthusiast scale. So this is a higher voltage string. For some reason, maybe you've, you know, you've got some low light um, performance issues, so you want to push your PV voltage up, but probably requires you to understand a little bit more about solar, where the, the small scale stuff is the sort of thing that you might find in a caravan at 12 volts, 24, or even in a car or a truck. Um, so, so that's, that's the difference, right? The enthusiast scale stuff supports 48 volts where the small scale stuff only supports up to 12 volt, uh, 12 or 24 with the 100 by 20 being the outlier. So we end up with, um, the enthusiast scale is, is greater than two kilowatts, um, with the exception of the 100 by 20, which sort of is straddling the two of them at 1160 watts. Silly bugger I was, I had, um... I had the 12 volt specs in on the uh, MPPT 100 by 30 and 100 by 50. 
So right, back to it. Um, so yeah, the 100 slash 20 is the top of the range for those little ones, in my opinion. I know that there's a, I think there's a 100 by 30, but it only does 12, 24 volt. So my opinion is that that 100 by 20 really, that that's about that's about the peak for these little ones. But then we move into what appears to be the enthusiast ones, but there's no 48 volt support. So I'm going to leave the 100 by 30 and the 100 by 50 in the small scale, um, and, and we're going to move on to the to the ones in the enthusiast scale. So enthusiast scale, you're, you're getting to you're getting to potential currents that are coming out that are fairly dangerous, right? I, like you, I think even at a thousand watts, you, you're already in potential danger land if you don't if you don't spec your cable out properly or you don't crimp your connectors properly. You're already in in trouble, and and we've had terminals melt on one of those MPPT 100 by 20s. Um, they do not have the thermal protection, so you just got to be wary of that. The 100 by 35 and the 100 by 45, which is we've got a 150. We've got a 150 there so they're about that size um they're they're like they're, they're sort of like in the middle like I don't, I don't even know what i don't know what market victron's trying to target with that because 2000 watts is not really you're getting to a point where you're like the voltages you're dealing with are, are potentially dangerous like and the currents are, are starting to get high um so i don't know what market they're actually going for there we bought this one for um for the caravan after the 100 by 20 like cooked its wires but the reality is that um we would never be able to commission enough solar on the on the caravan for that to be useful right and then in a situation like this it's not really big enough for it to be useful here either like i've got some small strings that i and i use it for mucking around like testing solar panels and what this one is sort of where they start to get to a useful size that you can you can charge a decent battery bank but you know, I mean, these are 5.8 kilowatts each. Like, for what you pay, I think these ones are, have got better value for money. Or the MPPT 100 by 20. That's a fucking spoiler alert because it's, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna allude to what I'm gonna say in a minute anyway. Um, all right, so then we move on to the other ones. So these ones are the large scale, right? Um, they start at I think 75 amps. Is that 70 amps? 70, 85, and 100. To be honest, I don't know why. By the time that you're spending this much money, I don't know why you would do anything other than get the 100s um uh, like most five kilowatt hour batteries are 100 amp hour like if you've got 48 volt or 52 volt nominal lithium batteries they're 100 amp hour anyway so you could hit them at 1c with one of these um and then you've got effective voltage or current control regardless so um it's my personal opinion you wouldn't bother with the 70s or the 85s you just go straight to the 5800s all right then there's a then there's a particularly uh, special um, couple of units, which is the 100 amp, uh, the 450 by 100, and the 450 by 200. Now I don't have any of these. Um, I did look at getting one, but there is some caveats to them, right? So you're paying a lot more money for these things, but the reason you're paying a lot more money is because they've got multiple MPPT trackers in them. So like you look at this and you go, well, I've got 100 amp here, but it's 100 amp on a single MPPT tracker. Right, so if I've split these, and, and we've already shown this to, to be the case, that when one of these things gets shaded, particularly this one, like one panel gets shaded, um, we we basically lose that string, right? We lose 22% of the output of the of the the whole MPPT. Now, if we had the 450 by 100, um, we could potentially mitigate that by having different strings on, on different trackers. The 200, so that, that's that's basically 5.8 kilowatts. We've got 5.8 kilowatts there and 5.8 kilowatts there. So by adding the 450 by 100, we're only adding 5.8 kilowatts, but we're adding some resilience uh, in the fact that it's got two MPPT trackers. The problem is I couldn't justify that at the time. Like it's just too expensive by comparison and the likelihood that I'm gonna have different configurations is, is minimal. That, that is one of the other benefits. It could You could have different configurations. Um, and, and I just decided I'm not gonna do that. I'm happy with the configurations I've got, um, and, and I'm happy for a more to go into a combiner box. The outlier, though, is the 200 amp version, which has four MPPT trackers, and it's 11 kilowatts. I think it was 11.7. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, so I think it's 11.7. I'd, I'd have to figure it out. Um, but the the MPPT trackers themselves are... They're, they can only track 16 amps of PV input, okay? So you've got to be careful about the way that you um, 
so there's there's some caveats there, right? These ones are all, all I'm sure there is a limit on the PV, but the the effective limit is usually what the output is on on the battery side. There is a short circuit current though that you've got to you've got to be um, weary of. Um, and then the other thing is that um, I mean these things are really really large scale. The the 200 by 450 and the one uh, two uh, sorry. The 450 by 200 and the 450 by 100 can parallel up to 60, uh, 25 units, um, but also they've got a limit on the voltage range. These will go down to 12, but the, the 450 series will not. So they're 36 to 60 volts. Um, and you'll see a lot of the time when they're being advertised, they're actually advertised as 48 volt only. They, they've got a wider operating range. I don't know how many people use them at 36 volts. I know you can do these at 36 volts. Um, you've got a it's it's not a battery preset it's something you can set in the app yourself i think these ones can do it too i'm not 100 not certain so you might so you might be going well why don't you go and buy the why don't you go and buy the 450 by 200 and it simply comes down to budget these are way cheaper i was able to get two of these and effectively get you know 5.8 kilowatts each so close to 12 kilowatts 11.7 or whatever it is um for like two-thirds of the cost of the 450 by 200 so it, it's just that's that's all there is to it but if i was to rank these things in order of like which one i think is the most cost effective it's it's easily the 100 by 20. like when it comes bang for buck the they're, they're like 110 dollars, man and you get 1200 watts worth of charging power like one of these is like 1700 australian um so yeah so my favorite one is without a doubt this one um i think while the little one you can't go past the cost um, when it when it comes to scale. You can't have a dozen VE direct ports, right? Once you run out of VE direct ports on your on your servo controller, you have to start looking for alternatives. So these ones support CAN bus. You can see there's a CAN cable there and a CAN terminator, um, and VE direct. Where these ones only only support VE direct. So you would be limited to how many of these you could attach to your system by based on what you've got on the servo controller which is three VE direct ports and usually you're using one for a shunt so you, you could only put one or two of these on potentially. Um, these you can you can daisy chain dozens of these together. So like this is where scale, these these ones are made for scale. So um, the little ones are, are made to be economically like cheap. And if you're putting it in a caravan or you're putting it in a in a four wheel drive, you cannot go past the 100 by 20. Now there is some caveats. The 100 by 20 has got some load outputs on it. These ones have got relay outputs, I think. Yeah, so these have got a relay output. Um, but the, the smaller ones have got a load output. What you've got to watch out for though, is the load output on the 100 by 20 is a load output when it's 12 or 24. But as soon as you go to 48, I believe, and I've, I've never validated this, but I believe this to be the case, that the load output is locked down to two amps only. So it's effectively a relay at that point. Um, so you got to watch out for that. But it, so yeah, if I if I was to put these in a scale of what's the most cost effective, it's easily the 100 by 20. But it doesn't work at scale. Then then you go to these. Um, if I was to want to add some you know a significant amount of capacity to the system, what would I do next? I would get the 450 by 200. So you imagine that the 450 by 200 could actually replace all of those in one hit. And then I could repurpose these for other other use cases. But when would you ever use something like this on a caravan? Like a, my mate with the Ford Ranger has got one of these. He's got the smart version of this in the back of his car. He's never going to touch the sides of that. Like it's really, let's face it, it's a little bit like this. It's a little bit of overkill for what he's using it for. But, you know, stroke your ego, I suppose. Um, so, yeah. So that's what I, like, I, I'm that sort of that's where i got to it's um everything here is a little bit ad hoc right we had no idea what we were going to do when we set out to do this we didn't specifically have a plan we only intended to off-grid the caravan and then you know basically this is life on the spectrum right when you uh you set out to just do something small and you realize this shit's really cool it becomes a bit of an obsession and then you know moments later you're um you've off-gridded the house <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I hope that I hope that clarifies how we got to it, sort of where we were. It's like um, we none of this was intentional. This would this replaced the 100 by 20 um, when it when it got hot terminals, um, and it, and it was significantly more expensive. But when I bought this, it was like eight or nine hundred dollars to to get how much more yeah how much more power like two and a half kilowatts instead of 1100. If I had two of the 100 by 20s, they would equal this thing's output almost. 
um, but it would occupy two of the VE direct slots. So it's you know, you know, so it's sort of it's a catch twenty two. Like what 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 fits your scenario? And if you're going to try and scale up, and this is the best thing about Victron, in my opinion, is it's heavily modular. And if you want to scale up, these are the way to do it. Um, unless you've got some extra floating cash, and then you or or if you need that diversity in your MPBTs. Um, then save the extra money and, and buy the 450 by 100 or the 450 by 200. They are fucking expensive though. Let's face it. Anyway, I'll see what I can do. We're um, we managed to get hooked onto the YouTube partner program, so I might go and see if I can't wangle one of those out of somebody for a review, eh? and we'll see uh, we'll see what we can do with it over the winter months. Maybe um, maybe it can make up some differences on our lost production with the cloudy days. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers.